And then I would like to give the floor to Bruno Dan Danini. Do I is that correct? Dagnino. Dagnino. Yeah. Dagnino. Dagnino. Yeah, it's a difficult one, don't worry. Okay, okay. Yeah, you're, um, uh, you're currently doing a PhD on uh, cognitive neuroscience, mm -hmm. and I think you're going to tell us something about football. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Go ahead. Thank, Thank you. you. So, four years ago, I moved from Argentina to Amsterdam to do a PhD in cognitive neuroscience. And while I was quite happy you know, with this beautiful city and with the new project I was starting, I was also a little bit sad, you know, because I mean, not as sad, as sad as the story before, but I was also sad, because uh, I was in a new city and I didn't have any friends. So one of the first things I tried to do is to actually try to make new friends. Uh, and one thing I experienced all my life is that one bulletproof way to make new friends is to play football with people you don't know. So I started looking around in Amsterdam for different places to play. And, and actually, it worked because I met two really good friends. I met uh, Ruben, who was a PhD student like me at that time. Uh, and I also met Enzo, who was a, an audiovisual producer. So and we shared a lot of things in common, of course. That's why we became friends. But one of the most important ones is that we were really crazy about football. So we could talk about it for hours and hours and hours. And we're not only talking about you know, the nicest goal of the weekend, but we're also talking about how, to, how the game was really developed. You know? Why players were doing the things they were doing, and why coaches were choosing one player and not the other one. So we're really like into trying to understand it from a tactical standpoint. You know? And probably because of our professional background, because uh, you know, we're two scientists and one of the visual producers, we, tried to include a lot of, we started trying to include data in our, in our analysis. You know? where the passes were on the field, how players move, and try to quantify all the things that we're normally analyzing of a game, in a game. And we like talking about it so much that at some point we start fantasizing with the idea of starting a company. You know, and we were thinking, I mean, wouldn't it be awesome if we could go to meetings in clubs and go to stadiums and talk with professional coaches? You know, it was like a little bit of a dream. Uh, and we talk about it a lot, but we didn't really believe it was possible. I mean, how were three guys like us that didn't know anything at all about starting a company would actually do so? So we talk and talk about it, but we actually were not doing anything. Till one point, we finally took the first step. And for us, the first step was something as simple as an email. And I just wrote an email to, to them saying, I think we should stop talking about it, and we should start doing something about it. And actually, we look up the email for this uh, presentation, and we realized that the first line of the email was this. You know, this email could be the beginning of a new phase in our lives. And of course, it was quite a sort of melodramatic. We didn't really believe that at that time. But the good thing is that because of that email we met, and the good thing is that once you have the first meeting, it's easier to have the second meeting. So once you start moving, it's easier to keep on moving. Uh, of course, you still have to make some effort to actually keep on walking, but it's easier once you start it. And that is what happened with us. So we had this first meeting, and that led to other meetings. And those meetings eventually led to our first uh, trial ever. <coughs> and it was nothing glamorous, so it was not a trial with a professional football club. It was not a trial with an amateur football club. What we did is we asked a couple of our friends you know, to just come and play for us. And we told them, we have this sort of crazy idea, so there are going to be two cameras on top of the field. And they were like, okay, whatever, I mean, I, I will play football, I don't, really uh, I don't really care about it. And what I'm going to show you now is a short clip of, of that day. So you see the yellow crosses on top of the orange players. And that is the positions of the players that we struck with the software we brought to do that, to track the positions of players on the field. And I know it looks sort of absolutely basic. I was actually a little bit ashamed to include it in the presentation of so basically it is. But you have to think that when we started thinking about the company, we didn't have any idea at all how to write a software that could actually do this. But we realized it needed to be done, and we couldn't pay anybody because we didn't have money, so we couldn't pay someone to do it. So we learned what needed to be learned, and we did it. And that is something that has been a constant through our history in the company, and hopefully will always be like that, is that we set ourselves to do things that we don't really know how to do. And it's qu it's quite, it might be quite a stressful process, but the good thing, so the idea behind it, is that I even if you fail, you will learn something in the process. Uh, and a really nice example of that is uh, that we apply with this a small match, we analyze it and we prepare a presentation, and we try to pitch our idea around. 
And the thing we did is to apply to one of the best accelerators for startups in Europe. An accelerator is a, is a program where you go and you grow your startup really fast in a really short period of time. So as you can imagine, these are highly competitive. A lot of people apply. And the year we applied, uh, there were 700 other startups doing it. And from those 700, they pre-select 15. And out of those 15, they invite them to what I call selection days. So you have to go and talk to investors and advisors and whatnot. And in the end, 10 are selected to actually join the program. And we're, of course, not really, uh, I mean, we didn't thought we would make it to the final 10, but we thought, OK, we'll apply and probably learn something in the process because you have to think what a business plan is, what a value proposition is, a lot of things that we didn't know. And actually, as expected, we didn't make it. So, so we were selected to the final 15, so we were called for a couple of interviews, and we were in the final 15. So we went to the selection days, and we pitched our idea around, even though we didn't know how to do it. Uh, but in the end, we were not selected for the final 10. And what you see in this picture is that at the end, you know, once they announced the winners, they called people to the front to take a picture. And I was there with uh, Ruben, and so we both went to the front, you know, and we were standing for the picture to be taken. And while we were standing there, we could see all the other start startups that lost in the back. You know, so I told him, I think this is only a picture for the winners. And we realized it halfway the photo, so we both sort of bent a little bit th that we wouldn't be in the picture. Uh, and Ruben actually did a really good job because you can't see him, but I didn't. So you can see sort of half my forehead is still there, we were trying to hide behind one guy, but it didn't really make it. So, yeah, it was a little bit embarrassing, but it was a super nice experience for us. And the, one of the most important things we learned in this process is that all the advisors and investors we talked to were telling us, you know, I think you have a nice idea, but what you need is traction. So you need to actually do a pilot with a professional club. And only then you will know, and people will know if what you have is valuable or not. So after this process, we were completely sure that that's what needed to be done. So we took our small and humble presentation, and we tried to pitch to some clubs that we could reach, because that's also not easy to talk to clubs. And finally, we got the opportunity to do a pilot with Fitesse, which is a Dutch uh, club in the Dutch first division. Uh, and this, once again, was a really stressful process because we promised them to do the pilot things that we were not sure we could deliver because we had never done this in a professional football stadium. We had never done the tracking with 11 players on each side. It was only five a side, really small pitch. So it was quite stressful because we didn't know whether we could actually make it or not. And to make things worse, we had promised them that we would have the data in 48 hours so that we could deliver everything in 48 hours. And to do that, actually, at least to increase the chances of succeeding, what we did is we went in the 48 hours lockdown. So we asked uh, Ruben's girlfriend to actually go and sleep at my house with my girlfriend. You know, so we kick her out of her own house. Uh, and we went the three of us there for 48 hours. We barely slept. I think this is a nice picture that describes what was going on that day. I think you can see chips, coffee, juice, medicines, tissue, water and a guy that might or might not be working and or sleeping all at the same time. So it was really like crazy 48 hours. But in the end, luckily, we made it, so we could crunch all the data, we could analyze all the things we wanted, and we delivered it to the club. And the club was quite happy with it. So that was the first time. So this was uh, eight months ago. And that was the first time we realized that we had something that was really viable. So we were still working our daily jobs back, back then, so we were only doing this at nights and weekends. And that was the first time we said, OK, we have something that has value, so we should just go on with it. And two months after I finished my PhD, Ruben was also done back, back then, and we started to work full time on the company. Uh, and a lot of things, good things happened to us uh, since then. So we have an investor now. We are hiring the first employee, which is super exciting for us because I mean, it's, it's a completely new experience. We have a nice pro product. We have a much better tracking system. And uh, we also, uh, one of the most important things is that we sign a, our first contract with a professional football club <coughs> in Spain. And this is a picture we took that day, actually. We're incredibly happy, I think. Um, but one of the most important things for me is that we never thought we would make it this far when we started. So when I sent the email, you know, saying that this could be the beginning of a new phase in our lives, I didn't really believe it. But we didn't really believe it, but we made it anyway. And I think we made it this far, even though we are still far from being a successful company, we are quite proud of what we did. And we made it this far, I think, first because we took the first step, so we wrote that email, otherwise you, mean you can't start moving. And the second thing is that we used that momentum, we used that energy, that inertia to keep on challenging ourselves all the time, to try to do things that we really didn't know what, how to do. So I think the main message of what we learned from this experience is whatever it is you are thinking about doing, 
Just take the first step and keep on challenging yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Um, Thank you. One more time. Your last name? Dagnino. Dagnino. Yeah. Okay. I have. Who has a question from the audience? No questions. No questions. Well, um, I have a question. You, you mm -hmm. really got the opportunity to. Yeah, this is your hobby also. You can do it with your friends. No, mm -hmm. you're, you're quite lucky. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> quite lucky. What is the next step? Um, well, I have to still finish my thesis, so that's one mm -hmm, step. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, now we are looking, so we, as I said, we've got an investor and we know a lot of things to go on. And uh, we are basically looking for more clubs. And we have only one client at the moment, so there are a lot of things still we have to do. Okay, so and more yeah. work to do. Yeah, exactly. If you want to know more uh, about Bruno and you want to ask him some questions, maybe in a more intimate setting, um, there is a program which Laurent uh, is going to host <laughs> <laughs> in the Media Cafe here on the left. So please go there and um, you have the opportunity to ask you many more questions. Thank you, Bruno. Yeah, thank you.